Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I'm gonna to be showing you with real world examples from a real wedding, how I mic the bride and record crispy audio of her saying her vows during a wedding ceremony. And your audio is gonna go from this, if you have the groom mic'd. I'm proud of who you are, and I'm proud to stand with you today as I pledge my life and give my heart to you. To this, with the bride mic'd. I'm proud of who you are, and I'm proud to stand with you today as I pledge my life and give my heart to you. Now you're probably thinking, Matt, miking the bride is intimidating. And up until earlier this year, I would have agreed with you. Miking a groom is easy. I have yet to find a groom I couldn't mic. They usually have a suit on with pants and a jacket, and so you can easily clip a recorder under their belts or under their pants or jacket pocket. They're all the same, it's easy. Brides, on the other hand, are usually wearing a wedding dress, and every wedding dress is different. You have ball gown, you have A-line, you have sheath, you have mermaid, you have backless, strapless. Okay, I'm just reading those off of a list that my wife told me about. I don't actually know a ton about wedding dresses. The point is that hiding the mic on a bride dress can appear to be far more complicated than clipping the mic onto a groom's jacket, or so I used to believe. This is the Tascam dr 10 audio recorder in white, and this is my go-to recorder for recording the bride on the wedding day. Two things that you need to know before I go into detail about how to use this. First, I have a full review of the dr 10 up on my YouTube channel, and I will link to it up in the corner and down in the description if you want to know why this thing is so awesome. Second, I learned about this bride miking technique from Sarah and Rick Pendergraf of Pin Weddings, and they are incredibly talented talented and they mic all their brides and they have a YouTube channel. So I will link to that down in the description as well. All right, let's dive into micing the bride and you are going to need three things to do this. First, you're going to need the Tascam dr 10 in white. Second, you're going to need a set of Rycote stickies so you can attach the lav mic to the bride's dress. And third, you're going to need a Neopax wireless microphone thigh strap. I will link to all three of these things down in the description of this video. Armed with these three items, I recommend that whenever you first show up on the wedding day, that you ask the bride if you can see her dress, so that way you can get an idea of what it looks like and you can tell where on the dress you should put your laugh mic. You also get extra points if you ask the bride to send you pictures of her dress ahead of time so you can see how easy it is to mic. This wedding that I'm showing you is the wedding of Kaylee and Doug. Now Kaylee's dress was beautiful, but it was a bit more challenging than some. The front of her dress above the waist was made of a sheer material, so we were a bit concerned with the microphone cord being visible. You'll see how we worked around this in just a second. We started by placing a Rycote sticky on the lav mic and then dropping the entire lav mic and recorder down her dress. Please note that it is always easier to do this before the bride has started to put the dress on and this is how we always do things. It is also not necessary to have the Tascam dr 10 connected at this time like I'm showing here in the b-roll. Just use the lav mic. Rachel then stuck the lav mic with the sticky into nearly the middle of where Kaylee's cleavage was going to be. Because the front was sheer, she actually attached it to the lining of the built-in bra, which kept it hidden. She then took another sticky and used it to route the lav mic to a portion of the front of the dress that was less translucent, so the mic cord wasn't visible. Do keep in mind that every wedding dress is unique, so every wedding that you mic the bride, it's going to look a little different. But every time that you mic the bride, I do recommend that you try to put the lav mic up as close as possible to her face to record audio clearly. I would also recommend that you try to find a balance between hiding the microphone and keeping it unobstructed from the dress so that way you do not deal with clothing rustle. At this point, the lav mic is stuck to the dress and the disconnected cord should be hanging out the bottom. The bride can put on her dress this way and there shouldn't be any problems. But how do we mount the dr 10 audio recorder to the bride? Well, this is where the Neopax thigh belt comes in. This thing is made of really sturdy Velcro and it has a nice pouch here that is the perfect size for a Tascam dr 10 Right before the bride is ready to put on her dress, have her put on the thigh belt. It's basically the same thing as a garter and most brides know how to use those, so you shouldn't have any issues. Next, the bride will put on her dress just like she normally would, and then the bride can hike up her skirt, or in this case, Rachel went up under the dress, turn the recorder on, and reattach the dr 10 to the lav mic cord. With that, we knew we were gonna be getting great sounding audio from Kaylee's first look and her wedding ceremony. Here's some audio from Kaylee's microphone, as well as from some other weddings where we have mic the bride. I will spend the rest of my life living up to the challenge of being the wife you deserve, and it's a challenge I'm so honored to take. I will spend the rest of my life living up to the challenge of being the wife you deserve, and it's a challenge I'm so honored to take. I also promise to never let you forget that I scored 10 points higher on the SAT. <laughs> I also promise to never let you forget that I scored 10 points higher on the SAT. <laughs> Our adventure is the one that I want to pour my heart and soul into because I can't imagine anything or anyone more worthy of committing the rest of my life to. Our adventure is the one that I want to pour my heart and soul into because I can't imagine anything or anyone more worthy of committing the rest of my life to. 
Once the wedding ceremony is done, we really don't need to record any more audio from the bride. Usually there's a point between the ceremony and the reception where the bride's dress is bustled so she can dance more easily with the groom, and that is the point when we usually take off her microphone. The bride can do this herself very easily. Just have her undo the sticky attaching the lav mic to her dress, then pull up her dress to the thigh strap, undo the velcro of the thigh strap, pull down, and the entire microphone should be removed from the dress. Lastly, here are a couple more recommendations to you to make sure that miking the bride goes smoothly. First, I recommend that you tell the bride ahead of time that you want to mic her. It is not gonna go well if you just show up on the wedding day and say, hey, I'm gonna put this microphone on you, I got this thigh strap. That can be intimidating and awkward. Always make sure that you tell her how the thigh belt works and how you're gonna attach the microphone to her and tell her how much better her audio is going to sound because of this microphone. My second recommendation is that I know that there are a lot of male-only wedding videographer teams out there. And up until Rachel started shooting with me, I shot a lot more often with a male second shooter than a female. Because of this, it can sometimes be awkward for both parties because whenever you put the microphone on the bride, you have to go up underneath her dress. So if you do not have a female videographer on your team, this is what I would recommend that you do. First, I would attach the lav mic to the dress with a sticky, but unlike how me and Rachel do it, I would leave the recorder connected to the lav mic and have it already recording. Then I would show the bride the thigh belt, how to put it on, and how easy it is to slide the DR Tonell into it. Whenever the bride is putting on her dress, she should be able to easily do this herself or have one of her bridesmaids help her do it. And that way, you are guaranteed to get good audio, but you did not actually have to make things awkward and have to go up under the dress to set up the recorder yourself. With that, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was able to help you out. I do feel like there are some of you that are asking, Matt, do I need to mic the bride though? Well, to be clear, I shot weddings for nearly eight years and never mic the bride and things were usually fine. But there still are some situations that you'll run into where the bride and groom are not standing super close to each other during the wedding ceremony, or it's a really windy wedding ceremony, and just micing the groom and the efficient will sometimes not result in the best quality audio of the bride. So I find that by miking the bride, that is just another step in quality that I can take. And with this setup, it is not difficult to do. I hope this video has made miking the bride less intimidating to you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a massive help to me if you would consider liking this video, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future. There are also a ton of links down in the description to all of the gear that I talked about today, as well as to my Instagram and my Facebook, and to Matt's Music List, my new subscription service to help wedding filmmakers find music. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. There's so many layers. I know. I can't see anything. Miking the bride complete.